The O'Reilly Factor's on tonight. Five Rams players came out onto the field with their arms raised, a show of support for the hands up, don't shoot movement. Was that appropriate, using an NFL football game to weigh in on a very controversial, divisive issue? Juan and Mary Catherine will analyze. I'm very concerned about the Obama agenda. I think it's hurt us measurably here in the United States. A new poll says Mitt Romney would defeat Hillary Clinton in the presidential election if it were held today. Will the governor take notice? Brit Hume on that. What boat did the pilgrims come over in? The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Marina. That was Christopher Columbus. Ah! And Waters World, the Thanksgiving edition. How much do you know about the pilgrims? What are you thankful for? Thankful for me? Yeah. You sure? Well, not at the moment, but maybe <laughs> later. Caution, you are about to enter the no-spin zone. Factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. What the Ferguson protesters accomplished that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. By rampaging through the streets of Ferguson, Missouri last week, those who believe police officer Darren Wilson should have been charged with murder for shooting Michael Brown brought worldwide attention to their cause. The looters and arsonists sent a strong message that anarchy and destruction are tools to be used in protest. Some national TV networks reported most of the demonstrators were not violent, but that is false. Once you see crimes being committed in any situation, you must walk away or you become part of the violent mob, part of the criminal activity. The protesters who did not loot or burn or assault the police, but who remained in the fray, are guilty of aiding and abetting those who did by providing them cover and support. The mob also did something else. It set back race relations in America years. The violent protests actually created more bias against blacks. Most Americans deploy the tactics of violence, even if they agree with the protest cause. I know many African Americans who are appalled at the display, well understanding the violent images in Ferguson, Missouri, alienated good people who are sympathetic to the concept of equal justice for all. Talking Points has documented how rare police killings of Americans really are, no matter what the color. 99.9% .9 of all police arrests do not result in a fatality. But the racial agitators are having none of that. Writing in the New York Times yesterday, Georgetown University professor and MSNBC analyst Michael Eric Dyson says, quote, As for the plague of white cops who kill unarmed black youth, the facts of which are tediously and sickeningly repetitive and impose a psychological tariff on black minds, the president was vague, halting, and sincerely non-committal. Dyson went on to call President Obama a traitor to his race for not siding with the violent demonstrators who, in Dyson's view, have a legitimate right to destroy at will. So let's take a good look at this plague of white cops acting violently against blacks, as Dyson puts it. In the past 50 years, the rate of black Americans killed by police has dropped 70%. In 2012, 123 African Americans were shot dead by police. There are currently more than 43 million blacks living in the USA. Same year, 326 whites were killed by police bullets. Those are the latest stats available. In 2013, blacks committed 5,375 murders in America. Whites committed 4,396. Whites comprise 63% of the population, blacks 13%. So anyone, anyone thinking clearly can see that the homicide rate among blacks way out of proportion. Thus, the police intrusion into black precincts. Since in a whopping 90% of black homicides, the dead person is another black or the offender himself. Michael Eric Dyson and his soul mates will tell you it is white America's fault. The black homicide rate is so high. He will call you racist if you cite the statistics. He will label you a white supremacist 
as he did to Rudy Giuliani. If you suggest that law-abiding black Americans organize against black-on-black -black crime. The grand jury in Missouri, regular folks, examined the evidence, decided against indicting Officer Wilson. Maybe they made a mistake. It's possible. Human beings are fallible. But the lynch mob mentality that Michael Eric Dyson, Al Sharpton, and other demagogues advocate is a far more obvious mistake. And that mistake should be clear to everyone. And that's the memo. Now for the top story, reaction. Joining us from Tallahassee, Florida, Benjamin Crump, a lawyer representing the family of Michael Brown. So where am I going wrong here, Counselor? Well, you said a lot there, Bill. And uh, the one thing I think about when you talked about the people who were protesting in the aftermath of the decision uh, who were nonviolent and peaceful, well, they have every right to exercise that First Amendment rights. Nobody condones violence, and nobody should condone violence in any way, fashion, or form. Well, Michael but Eric it's, Dyson it's really did, and in his column, well, he basically said those protesters had the perfect right, and President Obama was a traitor to his race for not sticking up for him. That's number one. And number two. But if you, no, 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 Counselor, you, you, you're an officer of the court, and, and, and I believe a, a very honest man. If you're protesting, you, Benjamin Crump, and you see somebody okay. torch a store, set a store on fire, you don't stay there. You walk away from that protest. I know you walk away. Well, and I'll say this, Mr. O'Reilly, I think everybody has a responsibility to try to uphold the law and tell the police to uphold the law as well as people who are protesting, you can't break the law and think that's right. Just like in the Bundy case in Nevada, a lot of people said him breaking the law, they called him a hero. And, and then they were wrong. They don't, yeah, but you yourself would not have law. stayed. He owed the government a million dollars. You yourself would not have stayed once the first match was tossed into the store or the first window broken. I, now, let me get I, on I to. I not, Mr. I know, Riley. I know, and that's, that's and the, the message I, I want to get out. Okay. That's the way to stop this. That good protesters, they leave right away. Okay. Well, the only thing I wanted to say, Mr. O'Reilly, was this here. The people are protesting peacefully when they see that stuff happening and they see police uh, around. We had to assemble law enforcement in Missouri. They expected the police to handle that, but they still wanted to voice their concern. Well, they can voice about it somewhere what they thought else was unfair. at another time. But don't stay there enabling these people. Now, I've gone out of my way to be fa uh, fair and, and sympathetic to uh, the Brown family. I think you know that. I think you, you, you know I have. Um, I'm very disturbed by the stepfather, uh, a man named Lewis Head, who called for the burning of Ferguson, Missouri. And I'm not going to play the soundbite again. Everybody saw it. You said he was emotional. I think you're right. Absolutely right. Um, but that doesn't, that's not an excuse. So now, now I'm looking at Mr. Head and, and maybe others around Michael Brown and saying, what kind of an example is this teenager given? I don't know whether you know this, but, but Lewis Head, his stepfather, is a convicted drug dealer twice. Did you know that? I was not aware of that, no. Yes. He's got two trafficking in narcotics convictions, and he served five years in... Uh, the penitentiary in St. Louis, in, uh, in Missouri. I, I'm, I'm worried about this whole story, that it's not really getting out what happened here, Counselor. I don't think okay. we know what the family, and I don't think we know the pernicious influences on Mr. Brown, and I'm worried about it. And I want to hear your side. Well, well Mr. O'Reilly, it's indefensible. Uh, what Mr. Head said that night, even though he was very emotional, they had just heard the decision that the killer of their unarmed, uh, his unarmed stepson was not going to be uh, faced trial by jury. He was emotional, but that's no excuse. The uh, asking people to uh, do violent acts, irresponsible acts, is indefensible, and we, I won't come and try to dignify that in any way, and that's a terrible message to send. But Michael Brown's mother and father have very, been very consistent 
Mr. O'Reilly, and ask them for peace, and ask them people to act responsibly in the face of overwhelming emotion. And with that said, they can't control uh, what others do, family members or friends, but they have been very consistent, and they're the people who, if anybody would have an emotional outburst, you would think it was them, but they have not done that. They, in fact, have been the opposite. They've been trying to be calm and say, even though it's very painful, it hurts tremendously, and our heart is broken. We're still asking people to be uh, peaceful, and let's try to find something positive in this terrible situation, like how we can be transparent in the future. All right, Counselor. We always appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Next on the rundown, now the Ferguson controversy has slipped into the National Football League. We'll tell you what that's all about. Then two Fox News photographers caught up in the violence last week. They will tell us what they saw on the ground, what they experienced. The Factor is coming right back.